that's one of the worst mentality you will have. Hello, Stephen Doctor. So today's main point will be meaning covering training psychology. And I do know there's a lot of takers been happening for the last few weeks. And I had a really good June slash beginning of July. Overall profit is close to 1.2 million. I kind of want to push that to a monthly recap. There's a lot of stuff I'm going to cover. But today's video will be covering four points related to training psychology. And I'm going to give some suggestions to you guys especially for beginners are just started in this trading industry. So the first point I want to cover will be trading confidence. Back in when I started trading five years ago, there's a huge problem related to trading confidence. Now, even though when I know a pattern is going to work out, it's going to pull back to the maximum reward and I still don't hold as long as I should. Now, eventually I get to taking profits way too early or cutting my losses way too late. So that's one of the biggest problems I had at the beginning. So the only way and the correct way to approach that is to track enough statistics. Now minimum samples per pattern will be 100 samples. I know people that have been tracking random stuff. They're tracking billion dollar cap and smaller cap at the same time. That doesn't really work. You have to put them into different categories, which I talked about in the last few videos. So make sure to go back and look at our statistic videos and to figure out how you're supposed to track your statistics. As I said at the very beginning, when you are tracking your patterns, you only need to focus one or two patterns. Now, the best will be one pattern for you to grow your small account into median accounts. I would say if you are anywhere between 3K to 30K, I only suggest to track one pattern first and start testing the water, growing your size in terms of regain your risk award. So in that way, you won't be as afraid to touch any other patterns you don't really know about. Meanwhile, you can track the other statistics for other patterns, but only focus on one. Then once you get the bigger accounts, you have the chance to go for other patterns to get more profits. But with that really small account at the beginning, you don't really have a chance. If you screw up, you don't get a second chance. So that's one of the most important tips I wanna give you guys. Do not risk multiple patterns at once especially at the beginning. So the second point I wanna make is fear of missing out. This is one of the most common mistakes that every single trader make. Personally, I made uh, multiple times in my trading career, say 10 or 20 times. Now to describe this type of mistakes is you personally miss the trade. You want to make your trade money back. Assume you already made money on the first trade. Since you missed that profit, you want to increase your size on the next trade then to be able to make more profit. You think the market owes you money. In that way, that's one of the worst mentality you will have. My suggestion will be at the beginning, you need to go back to your basics and start tracking statistics into different ways. You wanna track the frequency of the pattern, how many times they happen per year. You wanna track, okay, what's the average reward I could get from one pattern? So you will be able to generate a simulate again per year to really get rid of that type of mistake. Because if you know how much money you can make per year, then fear of missing out won't really affect you as much. Personally for me, it's worked out really well and I think you should do it as well. This is how I really get rid of this type of emotion to become a much better trader than I was before. The third point I wanna make is also the common mistakes that everybody make is when you are just getting into the trading industries, you're looking at on social medias and you see a lot of people making money, posting their gains, making hundreds and thousands of dollars and you're just a beginner. Now that type of thing will give you some type of FOMO to place your trade to make your trading results better than you supposed to. What it will happen will be, okay, so this is how much money I wanna focus on to make this month. In that way, you will never get to where your goal is because you're way focused on the results instead of focus on the process. Now the process is you have to track your statistics to become a better trader. You have to also practice reading level twos, have more market experience, just to have better experience in general to become a better trader. Now to focus in the process instead of focus on the results will make you much better trader than just focus on the money. 
This is one example. So when I'm trading a pattern, I always tend to cover my unrealized profit. So I don't really know how much I'm making. The main focus for me will be focused on the pattern development. Let's say the average regain for this pattern will be 25 to 30%. Now if I see, okay, well, I'm up about 99,000. I'm a thousand dollar away from making a hundred thousand. And I want to wait until that thousand dollar happen before I cover my position to get that a hundred thousand. See, in this case, I'm way too focused on making that hundred thousand dollars instead of focused on the pattern. Now the pattern tells me, okay, I should cover. I, today's game will be 99,000. But instead, I want to be more greed than want to cover to make a hundred thousand. Most of the time, you will not end up making $100,000. You will end up making 70, 80,000, much less than what the average statistics are supposed to tell you. And I do understand there's a big struggle, focus on the results and people coming into the market to make money. Try your best to focus on the process because this is the only way for you to become a better trader. Now, the last thing I wanna cover will be emotional limits. This is something that I found out personally for myself that when I'm looking at other better traders, right? I'm looking at how they're supposed to trade, going back their entries and exit to figure out, okay, what's their thinking process? How much are they sizing into? If they are sizing in about $50,000, right? Now, according to my account, I only have $50,000, let's assume. Uh, and I want to size in $50,000 to make the same profit as him. Now the results will come out completely different. He will have the patience to hold that ticker for one or two days. I don't because $50,000 is my entire account and I cannot risk a single perk or single drop. So every single movement will make me really emotional. Then every single movement for him, it's part of the pattern because he's thinking rationally. I'm thinking way too emotionally. In this case, well, who's going to come out as a winner? Him, not me. So for sizing into different patterns, you have to practice by yourself. It's something that is very different for different people. Now, let's say you have a $10,000 account. Some people are comfortable sizing in 3,000. Some people are comfortable sizing 1,000. And some people are willing to risk $300. Some people are willing to risk $100. So emotional limits is something you have to go test by yourself to really practice how to be comfortable in each pattern. Now, personally for me, I've practiced a ton. At the beginning, I practiced at least 10 to 20 times per size. So I don't change my size until I practice about 20 times and slowly increase about two to 3% each time when I try to grow my position. That will be my final suggestions for testing your own emotional limits. Hopefully this video is helpful. Those are my from the heart, how to become a better trader. So that will be all the tips for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.